So what I would like to do is to demonstrate all these kihon or fundamentals with um, the very first waza or technique that you learn, and it's called mai. For beginners, we call it seiza mai, because you have to go into a seiza position in order to do the technique. Uh, beginners are taught two different sets. One is a set from the position of seiza, where it looks like you're kneeling on the ground, and the other um, set is a standing a standing set. So we like to call it Seiza Mai. It gives you a clue of which position you're going to get into before you start practicing. Um, so when you're performing Seiza Mai, you have to do what's called Hakama Sabaki. And what you do is you take your right hand and you put it on your, on your right thigh. Your feet are at 45 degrees. And then you go into what's called a Sankyo position here. So both knees are bent. And you're going to take your right hand and you're going to slap your Hakama from the right and to the left as you sit into the position. And you do this, you're going to put your left knee down and your right knee is pointing to the right. And then you just simply place the right knee next to the left knee and then you sit right on the back of your heels. And you should have a couple of little wings here if you've, if you've done it correctly. This position can be very, very uncomfortable for us Westerners if you're not used to it, especially on a wooden floor. Lots of folks ask me, doesn't this hurt your knees? No, it hurts your feet sometimes because you're sitting on your feet. If your knees are in pain in this position, it means you don't really have a good range of motion of your legs. Um, don't force yourself into it. Go down as far as you can. I've even had folks just, um, just be on their knees like this and start in this position. That's fine. But if you find that is still too difficult for you, then don't do it. As humans, we're not designed to walk around on our knees. We're designed to walk around on our feet. So if this position is very difficult for you, we have standing versions of all of these waza, and that's something I can get to you. Um, but just because you're in this position um, doesn't mean you're able to perform iaido. You can perform a lifetime of iaido from a standing position. So don't let this stop you. Um, I've been doing this a very long time. I'm used to this position. Um, so just keep that in mind. So when you're in a seiza position, it's two fists apart with your knees. You have good posture. And your sword, you're going to notice, is sticking out 45 degrees. It's not on the side like this. That's leaving me wide open right here. You want it 45 degrees. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, turns uh, to the side so you can see some of the components better, and then I'll perform it again facing the camera. So we recite the name of the waza, Mai, and then we do a Hakama Sabaki. Then we go into this position here, Seiza. Now, when you go to grab your sword to perform Koyuchi no Kirikata, you're going to take the left hand and bring the sword down to the right hand. And then you're going to perform Koyuchi no Kirikata. You're going to need your thumb to Break loose the sword. You're then going to squeeze your knees together, tense up your hips and your lower back, and you're going to push the sword out like this. And now you're on your toes back here. You're not going to grab the sword and pull it out. You're going to push it out just like if you were saying stop with your hand. Okay. Here. Now I'm on both knees and both sets of toes here. I'm going to turn the sword with my left hand, not my right hand. I'm, I'm then going to pull the side back with my left hand and then draw the sword out. Now, as I do this, my knuckles are level with my shoulders, and my tip of my sword is just below the suba here. My shoulders are not really squared off. They're on a 45 degree, along with my hips. My toes are on the ground. This is nukitsuke. Then I'm going to perform 40 kaburi. I give a little pressure forward. I bring the sword around. When the hand reaches the front of my nose, I break the wrist and bring the sword tip right above my left shoulder. I then push the sword up so the sword blade is about 45 degrees facing the ground. I then take the left hand. As soon as my left hand grabs the handle, I do my big cut. 
You may not hear the swishy sound because I have my microphone here in front of me. But this is where you hear the big swishy sound of people swinging swords around. That was my Kiriros. When I perform Kiriros, my finishing cut, the sword tip is just below the suba. And my right hand is literally almost laying on my right thigh here. My foot is in front of my knee. You don't want to be in this position. This is really bad for your knees. And it's not a very strong position to be in, combatively speaking. So it looks like my right hand is resting on my, on my right knee. It's just above it. That was Kiryu Rosh. Now we're going to perform Chiburi. Chiburi, we're going to let go of just the left hand. We're going to push our sword out, giving pressure. Our blade edge is still facing our fallen opponent. And we're going to bring the sword up. I'm going to do a bicep curl, I call it, as we let the tip down. You can pull the full back, you can pull the foot back here a little bit in order to stand up. You're going to stand up, both feet together, and then do your chiburi. Now the right foot pushes back. You notice I didn't pull my sword back here. The right foot pushes back. I grab my saya, and then I perform noto. And I sink down with my sword as it gets put away. My knee touches the ground at the same time my sword gets put away. I bring my hand out to the edge of the sukup. I stand up. My knees are still slightly bent. And then as I back up, I perform my zanshin. Then my right hand goes to the side, and then my left hand goes to the side. Now when you back up, the first step back is always the most careful one because I'm still in cutting range here of my fallen opponent. So the first step back is really slow. And as I step back, I can erect myself a little bit more and then relax. Okay. Now I'm going to perform it facing the camera so you can get a good look. Now at the beginning of these wazi, you're also supposed to take three breaths. That's a different lesson. For now, we're just going over fundamental movements. So after you've gotten it to Seiza, two fists apart, I'm sitting on my feet, my sword is 45 degrees, hands are on the hips, not just in any other different position, they're relaxed here. I take my three breaths. And then what I do is I take the left hand, bring the sword down to the right hand. I perform Koiguchi no Kirikata by breaking the sword loose. I then squeeze my knees together. I perform all this tension as I'm rising up. I push the sword out as my left hand's pulling the saya back. That's really important. Now I'm on both sets of toes. I'm on both knees. Now I'm going to perform Nukitsuke. Turn the saw with the left hand. Right foot comes out. Cut. You'll notice my tip is just below my tsuba. From here I perform Furi Kaburi. A little pressure. Bring the sword around, break the wrist so the tip is over my left shoulder, push the sword up. Now I perform Kiriyorosh. There's my big cut. My, my opponent is now defeated. Now I perform Chiburi. I let go with the left hand. I bring the sword around. When the hand is in the same angle it was when I did my cut, which is 45 degrees, when it's in that same position, I drop the tip and do a little bicep curl here. I pull my right foot in very slightly for balance. Stand up, chibori. I then push the right foot back. I don't pull the sword back with me. I keep it here. I perform chibori. Now I'm going to perform noto. Pull the saya, uh, pull the saya out. Pressure. Now I perform noto. And I go down at the same time as my sword's getting put away. I secure my sword. Pull the, push the right hand out to the end of the handle. I stand up. Now I perform my zanshin. My knees are slightly bent. And I go back with my left foot slow. Two, three. Then I relax, right hand, then left hand. That's a basic look at an Iyai Waza called Seizamai. I'll show it to you at regular speed.
you're going to notice that um, I do different movements at different speeds. That's a lesson called Joe Ha Q, which I've done a video on that before. Um, it simply means slow, medium, fast. And if you want to look at that video, you can send me a request and I'll send you the link. So those are your basics in your EI Waza. Those are your key horn. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps a lot. Any questions or comments, just give me a just give me a call. Thanks.